uh, <clears throat> Xi'an headed to Qinghai. Uh, I am set to climb a mountain called what? Yujufen. A mountain called Lijufen. Yujufen. Yujufen. Uh, it's part of my lead up to the trip because if I want to climb Mount Everest, uh, the expedition company that I chose to go with wants me to have experience climbing over 6,000 meters and this mountain is 6,300 meters. So me and Annie, say hi Annie, hey. are going to uh, uh, Qinghai and going to get uh, that 6,000 meter plus with Yu uh, Zhifan. Hey B, tell me about the climb. We are going to Yu Zhufeng. Yu Zhufeng located at Qinghai province. And first we are we will arrive to Gurmu city and then we will I don't know how many days we have to work. Yeah, but how many we, we got how long is the whole time? Mm, one week. And how, how many camps different camps are we going to stay at? Three. I hope I will not frozen. Otherwise I will become Elsa. Give me a sign. And so, our second mountain adventure begins. We arrived in Golmud, a small city in the Qinghai province, to meet up with our lead guide and get all our gear inspected. Um, this is the majority of the stuff, actually all of the stuff that I have for the trip. One light pair of pants for hiking and one heavier pair of pants, thank God we bought today for the, the peak. A light shirt, heavy fleece, a rain jacket, a set of uh, zeal wool um, long johns. Then this is my Everest undergarment. It has a butt flap. Oh wait. Just in case, you know, you have that urge. So this is my light glove, and then this is my medium gloves, and then these are my summit gloves. Three pairs of underwear. This will keep the light out. This will be just a fleece lined uh, uh, hat at the top. I can throw this on and it will cover me. Two big jackets. This is my summit jacket, which I got from for Everest. Our, our guide is going to come and then tell us what we do need and don't need. My protective helmet, my crampon. Got a pair of really nice walking stick. Just in case Annie gets out of the line, I can just. Fuck you. Hit her a couple of times. Uh, a sort of carabiners. Summit goggles for the top. A headlight. Camera pouch. These are called gaiters. They fit over your over your boots. Your gaiters will be protecting so the snow can't get down into your boot. Uh, I bought this harness for Everest, but when it, Mine. when it came, it was too small. So I think that I'm gonna have to give it to Annie and then Annie will use it. I have a pair of uh, Nike tennis shoes and then I have these which are uh, La Sportiva boots. Negative 25 degree uh, sleeping bag, my sleeping mat, a small inflatable travel pillow, a small Egyptian cotton travel sheet. I'm going to be taking this camera that you can see that Annie's holding, that's a 5D Mark III. I've got a GoPro Hero. I'll also take my iPhone. Three, four, four of these power supplies. So. Li Yuan, our lead guide, showed up a little later to inspect all our things and choose what we could leave behind what was critical, and make sure we weren't missing anything. Do I need both of those? He said that the mountain this year was unseasonably warm and recommended a selection from our gear that would be adequate for the conditions and said some of it could be left behind at base camp. <laughs> said this year, 
it's uh, different. It's pretty warm. Uh -huh. uh, normal, it's more cold. If I only take this one, it's not warm enough. Hey, what do you say? He said, uh, uh, from now to later, seven o'clock, we will meet everybody. And between this time, you have to wear as much as you can. Do not sweater. You know, if you can wear, I can wear this one. No sweater, you just wear it. And we have to wear the hat. Right now? Here? After the inspection, we went to a local restaurant nearby, where we met with the other members of our expedition team. It was a varied group, some with more experience than others, but everyone seemed capable and excited to get going. Mr. Lee reviewed the plan for the ascent and went over the rules of the mountain. <音>后面的六天的时间后面六天时间就要说我们一万人的行程啊明天我们去公园圈后天大本营大后天大本营ABC水平冰川训练大后天还是训练然后这一天上司一然后最后一天冲顶下水回到这儿来大概行程就这样
had a few other interesting spots along the way. I'm in uh, Kunlun, like, I guess it's a park area, and this is a, a natural spring that's coming up, and the, it's so, the spring is so penetrating that even the, even the stones are floating. <laughs> Actually, you can drink from them. How's it taste? Cool. Remember the bathroom next to it? Yeah, yeah. The problem is that there's a, there's a shitter that is like really right outside this thing and it's and it's and it's it's beautiful. There's big there's big mountains here like this that are natural, made of stone, and then there's big mountains of of shit that are over there. So it's like beautiful scenery everywhere you go. The majority of the western half of China is arid and mountainous. Southwest plays host to Tibet, the Himalayas, and a number of peaks, including Everest. And the northwest borders Mongolia and the Stans, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Pakistan, where you can find the infamous K2. We weren't going that far. Instead, you could think of us as going slightly west of center. To a mountain range called Kunlun. So, uh, where are we? We're in Budongquan, and we're gonna sleep here. And I have headache. If this was rated on a five-star scale, hotel scale, what would you rate this? Menos. I'm slow, I feel a little bit high. Well, because we're a little high. Budongchen was isolated. Its significance to us was that it was the only outpost before base camp and the only hotel restaurant four kilometers in any direction. It is windswept. It is dry, and it sits 4,628 meters above sea level. <laughs> we pick indoor. I, what did you say? I said, boom, that's mine. Comfortable? Mm. Not bad. So um, we just ate dinner. The Laban is measuring everybody's pulse rate. Annie was like 112 or something. And, uh, but I was the lowest. He said that if I'm this low tomorrow, he'll take me to the top early. After dinner, Mr. Lee took us for a little walk. He seemed very concerned about keeping us moving and active and not letting us rest up too much. This is a strategy to stave off altitude sickness, which can make you feel nauseous and miserable. So we're taking a little walk and uh, everybody's pretty dressed up warm. But me, I'm, I'm wearing like 
pair of light pants, maybe a shirt underneath the fleece, and I'm okay. Everybody's saying, maybe it's because you're American. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, other than breathing heavy, which I think is natural, my heart rate's down and it's pretty good. I think on this, uh, this mountain climb, I'm gonna pay more attention to my stats. Two two train. Two two train. Two two train. Thunder. Hey B, I'm a little worried. Why? Well, first of all, your your lips are purple. <laughs> they're not quite uh, red. Red, the way they should be. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel <coughs> actually better than just that. Taking a walk is nice, right? Mm. This is nice. Show me your hands. You'll be surprised. Show me. It's purple. If you can't see that, her fingers are the same color as her nail polish. Purple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a joke with him. Look, look, look at my nail. It's so purple. You're funny. You're real funny. Huh? You're funny. <laughs> to stave off the effects of altitude sickness, Mr. Lee offered us a fairly steady supply of clear liquid that roughly translated to glucose injection. I'm not sure if this was to boost our electrolytes or just keep our sugars up, but either way, we took them and got off to bed as early as possible. Well, it's our first morning at altitude. <laughs> Annie's not doing too well. I'm not doing too well either. Uh, I have a headache and uh, feel a bit nauseous. Annie is nauseous and has a headache on the 1 to 10 scale of about 8.5, she says. She's uh, contemplating scrubbing her ascent. It's amazing how a uh, simple thing as going up <laughs> can have such a weird effect on a human being, you know? You'd think that you could go anywhere in the world and, you know, a human would adapt to the world, you know? But, uh, no, no, you know? We're made for a certain small area on the earth. We go too high or too low. It can cause problems. I know. Do you want to have a cup of coffee? Well, after a long day of suffering and some tough choices, Annie thought that uh, it would be best that she stay here and try to recoup while I go to uh, base camp with the, uh, with the remaining people that, that are going up there. I'm hoping that she can get better. Uh, what do you think, A.B.? I hope so. Yeah, but I don't. I, I don't really fucking pay the money, and I won't go there. Uh, it won't be as Jayo as it could be, but uh, Jayo. Jayo too. I will not fight with my body if my body not say, "I, you cannot go." I don't want to die there. Ah. Uh, why this time? Fuck. I'm strong like a cow. Now Annie is probably one of the strongest women I know. So to have her choose to stay behind said a lot to the pain that she was in. So while I continued up the mountain, a couple of our guides stayed behind with Annie. 
and would stay with her while a car came to take her back to Golmood. For the next couple of hours, six of us all uncomfortably crammed into the front of a pickup truck and proceeded down lonely roads towards the camp. Our driver seemed quite the socialite, stopping indiscriminately to have conversations with the rare passerby, leaving us cramped and hot under the baking sun. Not sure what's going on, but we're stuck at the gate into the glacier. I have no idea what's going on, but our driver is kind of enjoying the ride, taking time to see some old friends and maybe have some tea inside, I don't know. But hopefully we can get to the mountain soon. Base camp was set along a glacial river at the foot of the mountain. After we unpacked and found our tents, gear was distributed to those that didn't have it. So right now we're all getting fitted for our equipment. I have most of my stuff except for the pick and my uh, my harness. So uh, everybody else is picking up their stuff. The last mountain that I did climb was Haba. You might have seen that in the last chapter. But that was 1,000 meters lower and over a year ago. I was starting to learn that each mountain has its own personality and its own dangers and considerations. For Yuju, the climb itself was straightforward, similar to Haba, the peak is covered with ice and snow and will require the use of crampons. But unlike Haba, the majority of the mountain is loose rock and has a large glacier cutting down one side. Mr. Lee guided us through the application of the gear, which was a good review for me. But then he spoke of the importance of cadence. This one was new to me. By controlling your steps, and forcing yourself to slow down. You can conserve your energy and work as a team. On Hamba, Annie and I climbed together and our pace was probably too quick. This was the first time I'd ever have ascended as a team. We spent the next few hours begrudgingly pacing up and down the surrounding landscape training us all to plot on slowly and in unison with each other. It was boring, but it forced me to hold the throttle back, with the understanding that slow and steady is what really wins the race. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm in my tent. I left dinner early. I feel great. Uh, the uh, My headache uh, it's like one uh, but the but my body pain is is pretty intense. My legs hurt. I can't you ever get that where you lay down and you can't lay down without your body hurting? Uh, it's gonna be a rough night. I thought it was gonna be a good night because I didn't have a headache but maybe another another Pain. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I made it to the morning. I find that if I breathe heavy, it, uh, it's helpful. Even I don't feel like I need the air. It kills my, it kills my headache. Uh, I was walking with one of the guides the other day trying to get reception on our phones. The only way we could get reception was to go way, way up, up on that ridge and then uh, we could get a few bars. 
uh, for for uh, calling some people. I talked to Annie. She's doing horrible. Uh, she's not doing well at all. She will not be joining the expedition to the top, which is sad. But uh, this is a lot different than Haba. In Haba, the uh, <clears throat> the climb was quick and kind of unorganized. Uh, it's kind of a race to the top. Here, you're spending nights at camps and going from base camp to C1, C2, C3, and you know, uh, it's a little bit boring, but it's a side of climbing I haven't uh, really experienced yet, so it's different, which is good. And I think that this is more relevant to the training that will help me for Everest uh, when I get there. So I'm embracing it. I, uh, I feel fantastic today. We're at 5,000 meters, and uh, although I had a little trouble uh, in the beginning of the night with uh, what it turns out was lying vertical. I was, f I was lying flat, not vertical, I was lying horizontal. And my head and my heart were at the same level, and I, I, I swear to, I, I felt like I was gonna die. <laughs> it was not good. But as soon as uh, Laban got, uh, told me that I, I need to lift up my, uh, my head, I, I stacked a few bags behind my head, and, and uh, I felt much better. Had a really good night's sleep and feel really good today. So, I wanna run up that mountain. I wanna run up that thing now. But uh, today we're gonna go visit a glacier first, after breakfast. Uh, and then uh, come back here, spend a night here again. Then go up again to camp one, and then come back again. So it's a lot of back and forth, but it's okay. There's a little gopher here that's chattering at me. Last night I woke up and the gophers were under my tent, and they were they were like <laughs> rummaging around underneath my tent, which was weird. So uh, I was eating breakfast and somebody peeked their head in the window. I'm here. <laughs> Apparently she felt better and now she's going to climb to the top of the mountain. How was it last night? It was tough, but after I buy the tickets and the book of the taxi, I was totally pulled down. Like, okay, one more night and I can leave. I think this, this point made me feel <laughs> cover myself a lot. Jayo. Jayo and I start to eat. That's good. Trust yourself. With Annie back in the game, we left for our first destination, doing some ice training at the foot of the mountain glacier, two hours hike away. Again, Mr. Lee stressed the importance of slow and steady and guided us in the proper methods of scaling icy slopes with the use of crampons. Well, we are uh, on the glacier now and uh, I just strapped my crampons on for the first time. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes of sickness, Annie took the lead and rocked it through every drill and exercise. So last night we had a, uh, oh, it was a deluge. It was raining all night. I think that uh, I, I thought there would be trouble the next day, and there kind of was. As a matter of fact, the mountain behind us is covered with new snow. Camp Base Camp 1 is, is going to have a ton of snow in it, so that's where we have to go tonight. There was a moment where we thought uh, we might not be able to get there, but uh, a couple of the guides went up and, and said that it was cool enough to go, and so we packed up all our stuff, and now we're going to go to... Uh, Camp one, but I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna bring my camera. I was looking forward to carrying it, but you're just too damn big. So the rest of this is gonna be on GoPro or iPhone. So 
加油！我知道他们是不跳，但是我害怕踢到你。你怎么那么走了？就这样走了吧。帮我拉一下旗子。第二集看一看。我我背后对着我的学生。那挖的时候有没有旗子？有，这个是留给我们。Okay, so we are at、uh, the first stop where we were training for the ice earlier. Everybody's packing there. <laughs> Here and we're going to take it up to C1, which is way up there. Well, I'm at、uh, 5,300 meters, and、uh, you have to walk after me because you walk too fast. Do it, okay? Which way the time on the? Why? And I didn't hit record. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah, it is. It's 3:20 in the morning, and we're gonna leave here at four o'clock. And in about three hours, we'll be at the top. Annie is not doing so well. She's still in, in her dream, I think. And、uh, so, anyways, we're gonna get packed up. This is the first time I've worn my Everest jacket, so it'll be a nice test. Nothing worthwhile is easy, and、uh, this is the last bit of the climb here. So, Jayo,、uh, Jayo,、uh, I had to ditch all my stuff. Yeah, we're getting close, close to the the end. So, Jayo, A B, A B, A B, Jayo. Anyways, I'll see you at the top. Hopefully these clouds go away because we are above the clouds and it's beautiful. Well, we're at 6,300 meters. How you feel? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm proud of myself. You're a rock star. Yeah, I think so. What do you think of the view? Pretty cool. Can't Always. See anything. But we can prove we're here. Jayo, 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 Jayo! Woo! Jayo! Ah! 
ordinarily I'd say that going down the mountain gives you a chance to see uh, what you've missed on the way up. Because normally you leave really early black, pitch black. Now it's pitch white. There's, there's, there's just a fog everywhere. So we went up, we saw the peak. Uh, that was the only thing we saw because we could only see a, a radius of a few square meters around us. And now we're headed back down and it is white. White, white. And Annie's not feeling very well. <laughs> you know, going down, sometimes it's harder than going up. <clears throat> Especially on the knees. Okay, that's it. Base camp is being packed up. My throat has seen better days. <coughs> Annie's as well. So, we're just gonna pack up and do a 4K back to the uh, base camp. And then go back to Gulmer. Gulmer. And then find a nice place to sleep tonight. With an uneventful descent, we packed up our things and put Yi Jifeng behind us. For me, I have another experience to aid in my eventual summit of Everest. And for Annie, she has an experience of mind over body, pushing herself through another amazing challenge. The next chapter of the Jayo Travelogues will take us to Xi'an, a stop Annie and I made after leaving Ijufang. Then we will come back to present day, taking me up even higher to my most recent climb of Mushitaga in western Xinjiang province. Jayo. Yeah, so you see that. Oh, it's the mountain I climbed. Pretty cool.